Hey, I'm Lauren. This is Bizarre Gardening Accident, and today I am doing a fall monochromatic makeup look. It's a lot of color on the eyes as well as a lot of color on the lips, but I'm generally into that sort of thing. Plus, I've got my nail polish and shirt that all match. I'm like very burgundy today. Um, so one note that I want to make is we are currently having uh, like gutter guards put on our gutters. So there are people outside working and if you can hear some of that, I'm really sorry. Um, and also just as a personal note, just so you know, uh, I live in a house with my husband, my daughter, my husband's mother, and my husband's grandfather. So that makes four adults in and out doing things uh, constantly. So it's kind of a big busy house. So if there are weird household noises that you ever hear in the background of my videos, I got like a million people that live here. It is what it is. Um, so I, I apologize. Also, I know my sound quality is not great. I need a microphone. I'm working on doing that. Um, so yeah, that's just a note that I wanted to make. So if you want to watch me put all the burgundy makeup on my face, then you are in the right place. Okay, let's get this monochromatic makeup show on the road. I have started with a couple of things already done. I've done my skincare up to my sunscreen, so I've already put my sunscreen on, and I have already primed and set my eyes with an eyeshadow that is close to my skin tone. So, uh, for this, we're using this color that's on my nails, that's my top. I got this nail polish uh, in an Ipsy bag, and I was like, oh, I have a top that color. And then I was like, oh, I have an eyeshadow palette that will give me that color on the eyes, and it is the Melt Muerte palette. I'm gonna use these three shades here. Um, and do a monochromatic burgundy maroonish type look. Um, I've done this before. It's a, it's a little intimidating because it's a lot of color and it's very pigmented shadow, but it is doable. Um, so I want to do this all matte monochrome eye today. And so I'm going to start with my Wayne Goss. What number is this? 17. It's a fluffy brush. Ordinarily, I start most of my eye looks with a Sigma E40, which you can tell is quite a bit bigger than this Wayne Gloss brush that I'm going to use. This is great for laying down like a lighter transition shade. There are really no light transition shades in this palette, um, and I find that using a color this pigmented or a formula this pigmented with this particular color um, makes blending a little much with a big fluffy brush and I need a smaller brush and I'm going to make sure to keep everything that I do kind of tighter into my eye than normal because the colors are so rich and are so pigmented that when you blend them out it gets like blown out quick. So I want to keep everything real close to my eye initially so that I do have some room to blend. So first thing I'm going to do is go in with the middle shade which is the uh, middle in terms of depth for these three shades and I'm gonna it's called Sangre and I'm gonna just dip my brush in here a little bit get it mostly on the end tap off the excess and they do go on very pigmented so I would caution you just be careful with this eye palette because it is easy to go overboard quickly all right so I'm gonna hold my little hand mirror so I can see up close what I'm doing and I'm gonna try to do it straight on because I know that is the best angle for this for filming so I'm just going to dot it right here and I'm going to kind of swish and blend and circular motions, windshield wiper motions, both, both of those things. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that you will get the most pigment the first place you put your brush. So that was the first place I put my brush. So obviously I'm gonna get the most pigment there. Or maybe it's not obvious, um, is that you will get the most pigmentation in the initial place where you put your brush, so just keep that in mind. And these do blend out pretty well. They get a little patchy at the top. However, I would say that that's a lot to do with my own uh, eyelid texture because it's I find that a lot of shadows on me kind of get patchy up here and I really think it might be a skin texture 
thing and not like the fault of Melt Shadows or whatever brand I happen to be using. All right, so it's just really just add color, blend it out is, is the name of the game here. And I, I, I'm always starting at this kind of like outer corner here. And I'm trying not to take the color too far down because that drags my eye shape down. So I'm just packing it into the crease and blending it out. And now I'm going to take a completely clean blending brush and just go, there's no product on this brush and I'm just gonna go around the edges here. Um, a clean blending brush is really important for intense looks like this because you can get muddy easily if you've still got a bunch of product left over and you're trying to use that brush to blend out. Alright, I am pretty happy with that there. So, the next thing that I'm going to do is take this flat shader brush and I'm going to use Valorio, which is the deepest of these shades, and I'm going to pack that all over my lid. This is why um, I'm doing my eyes first. Actually, these shadows don't produce a ton of fallout. I'm, I'm kind of shocked at how little there really is. Um, I'm taking my big fluffy blending brush and I just pack this shade onto my lid so what I want to do is just blend it kind of in my crease here so it just runs into that first shade that we put down nicely and creates a gradient. And I'm also going to take this and get it just right in the inner corner of my lid. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And I'm blending with the clean blending brush, which will not be clean for much longer. Okay. Alright, that color is down. Now, this is a subtle difference, but I do think it does make a difference. I'm going to take this little tiny brush and I'm going to take the shade Corazon, which is the bright red, is red. And I'm gonna go just on the edge here with that shade. Not up into where I've already blended. I'm putting it right on top of where we started um, with Sangre in the crease. I'm kind of putting it right on top of there. I'm gonna take my big fluffy blending brush again, blend that out. Yeah, this look is not complicated. It can just be intimidating if you're not used to this much color. And it's just adding pigment, blending it out, re-intensifying it till you're happy with where you are. So I'm taking that deepest shade Valorio again, and I'm kind of packing it all over the lid again. Now I'm gonna go back with my Wayne Goss brush in Song Gray. And just kind of go over where we put that red shade. And my big fluffy clean blending brush. Now I'm going to go around the outermost edge of it also helps for a look like this to have your little hand mirror but then also a bigger mirror in front of you so you can kind of see from a distance the changes that you're making. I find that very helpful. Okay so I took this red shade a little bit further out. There. Now I'm really getting happy with this gradient. All right. And I'm really kind of working on this outer edge here. I don't want there to be a harsh line, so I'm kind of trying to eliminate 
that line. It's just lots of blending. This is just a blending heavy look. All right, I believe I am happy with where I am with that. So I'm going to catch my other eye up and then we'll do skin and then we'll come back to the lower lash line. So BRB with my other eye done. So I've got my, my other eye done. Um, one of my like favorite tricks for really making sure that you've got the sort of blend that you want is taking a skin tone colored shadow and going around the outer edge with a very big fluffy brush. This was my formerly clean blending brush and now I'm just taking skin tone for me colored shadow and just kind of going around the very edges of everything. That really helps the blend. All right, so I think I'm happy with where I am with that. So I'm gonna zoom out a bit and move on to the face. On to skin. Today I wanted something uh, that is familiar and homey and that I know works super well for me. And for me, that is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter for Superstar Youth Glow in shade two, light. Oh, that was a lot of talking. And, uh, my L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow in 202 Creamy Natural. So that's the base combo I'm going for today. And I like this base combo because you can kind of, well, I like the Pro Glow because you can matte it up with powder a bit if you want, or really enhance the glow with a glowy base, which is what I'm doing today. All right, got my Hollywood Flawless Filter all blended in. Now it's time for this. I'm a foundation shaker. A lot of foundations like tell you to shake them and now I just do it with all of them too. Dotting it on with my fingers as per usual and I will rub it in with my hands, touch it up with a sponge. And I actually didn't have any fallout to clean up from my eye makeup, which again, I'm surprised by given how pigmented and intense these shadows are. All right, that's looking really good. As per usual, you can always count on Pro Glow. Uh, it's starting to cool off here, which is exciting. Everybody starts getting excited about fall in August and I live in the deep south and we just, fall seems so far away when it's 95 degrees outside that I don't even really start thinking about it until October. And this year, September has been really nice. It's like actually starting to cool off now, which is, you know, not a given every year. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's 95 degrees every day of September. I believe that was last year. Okay, foundation is blended. So now I'm gonna take my concealer, which is also the L'Oreal Pro Glow concealer, and I'm gonna take two little dots of that underneath my eyes here. I will only be concealing underneath my eyes today. I'm not going to do any spot concealing. I don't see anything that really needs it, so foundation is enough for me. Try to make less dumb faces while I film, and also I like tilt my head to the side like quite a lot. I didn't realize how much I did that until I started editing these videos. Because I filmed myself putting on makeup for a solid year before I started, like, posting it. That's a real thing. I was terrified. I, I mean, I still am, honestly. The, the only reason I can stand to do this right now is because I know that no more than 16 people are going to see it, probably. So that makes it a bit easier. But yeah, I didn't realize, like how much I like tilt my head, move in dumb ways, make dumb faces until I started like actually posting these videos. Okay, 
So now I'm going to take my Hourglass Translucent Setting Powder and I'm going to set under my eyes and all over my face. Oh, and where I was going with it's definitely starting to cool off. It is definitely starting to cool off because I have noticed that my skin is getting drier. Um, so that's a pretty good indication to me that autumn is on its way. All right, face is all set. Yep, I'm happy with that. And now I'm going to Pixie Glow Mist. And pat that in with my sponge. I know I harp on the patting mists and with the sponge thing, but it really does like change the texture of my makeup. I find like it just really helps everything not sit on top and actually settle in. It helps a lot, I think. Okay, lower lash line. So I am going to take this little, where is it? Pencil brush. There's my little pencil brush. And I'm gonna use this middle shade, Sangre, which is the um the shade that we used, or the shade that I used in my crease first. And I'm gonna take that and run it along my lower lash line. I'm not gonna zoom in for this part because I don't feel like you're really missing a ton of it. It's a pencil brush and I'm using it on my lower lash line. It's not. I don't think it's super imperative for you to be right up in my junk to see this. Mostly it's because I have a fixed zoom, I have a prime lens, so I can't zoom in and out. Um, I have to like physically move the camera and I'm just not gonna do it again. So I'm only taking the color about two thirds of the way in on my lower lash line. Um, I find that when I take, especially dark colors, but really it's any color, all the way in on my lower lash line, it like closes off my eye in a way that I don't find super flattering. Um, so I'm just gonna take my little color switch here and this original fluffy brush we went in with, and I'm just wiping off any excess product from this fluffy brush because I don't want more product. I want the brush to blend and I'm just gonna blend along this lower lash line from for the color that we just put down and just buff out that edge and then kind of connect it up to the top uh, we're having our like we're having gutter guards put in on our gutters and some dude just walked by my window with a giant ladder and I was not prepared for it so that's what that like look of shock was. Okay, I feel like I've got a patch of color that's kind of missing from this outside edge. For some reason, this little outside corner of my eye doesn't want to hold on to product. It's just like a spot that I have that just is stubborn. Okay, yes, so I am happy with where we are on that. Now I'm going to take my Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil and Alkaline, and I'm going to line my lower waterline. And again, same with the shadow. I am not taking this all the way in. I'm only going about two-thirds of the way. Just that lower waterline ends up being like starkly skin toned when the rest of my eye is like so dark. So I just kind of want to color that in. Also, I'm going to tight line up here at the top for basically the same reason, just fill in any like skin tone colored areas that will jump out and look weird. Okay. All right, now, cheeks. Let's do the cheeks. Oh, I get to use a new product today. I'm so excited about this. This is the Hourglass Bronzer in Diffused Bronze Light. So a while ago when I started wearing bronzer and the product that got me into bronzer as a product category was the um, Wet n Wild Sunset Striptease Bronzer. So when I bought that one, 
I was buying it because I was interested in diffused brown light and bronze light and Raw Beauty Christie said that the Wet n Wild was super similar to the Hourglass one and as a person who didn't wear a ton of bronzer, I didn't want to spend the money on the Hourglass one not knowing whether or not I would like stick with bronzer as a product. And it turns out I did stick with bronzer as a product because of that one specifically. I just liked that one very much. So I've got such a huge patch of pan on it and I decided while I was picking up some other things that I had run out of, I would give this a shot. And it's beautiful and I love it. And absolutely, I would say that the Wet n Wild Sunset Strip Tease is a pretty good dupe for this Hourglass bronzer. It's great. Okay, so for cheeks, uh, for blush, I'm sorry. For blush, I'm going to use my NARS Wanted 2 cheek palette, and I am going to use this middle shade here. These are incredibly pigmented. Yeah, you just, you do not need a lot of product here. So I would say that for deeper skin tones especially, NARS blushes are really nice. They will show up on you for sure. And I like a pigmented blush. I always like to put on way too much blush and then take it away. That's my process. All right, cool. So I have a ridiculous amount of blush on now. Excellent, as per usual. Highlight, I'm going to use my MAC Star Trek. Oh, I love it so much. When they came out with makeup with the Star Trek logo on it, I almost died. I'm a huge Star Trek fan. Um, and this is the Trip the Light Powder in Luna Luster. Obviously, this is limited edition MAC, so you cannot still get this particular highlight, and it is my favorite highlight of life. However, it's not undupable. You can absolutely find pink highlights that are similar. This one just particularly, I think, works very well with my skin tone, but it's just a pink highlight. You can find a pink, I have three more pink highlights that probably also give a, an effect that is indiscernible from the Star Trek. So it is my favorite one and I do love it, but there are plenty of pink highlights out there that I could use to get the same effect. So now I am going to use my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Luminous Light. And I'm gonna use a, this big fluffy brush to put that all over. Mostly what I'm doing is blending out my cheek products and then putting a little bit more everywhere else, but the majority of it really goes on my cheeks and it's really to make sure everything is super blended here. All right, brows. I am keeping it simple for the brows today and I am going to use the shade Chocolate Dipped in my um, Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes palette and I'm gonna use this little angled brush just to fill in my brows with eyeshadow. And that will be all I do in terms of brows today. It's not that exciting. I'm not great at brows. I hate doing my brows. I mean, most of the time they turn out fine, like it's a passable look, I guess. But I'm just generally annoyed by brows. I'm not good at it. Don't take brow advice from me right now the advice that I have is fuck with them as little as possible because you can't do it very well because I can't do it very well all right they are filled in and now I'm gonna spoolie them just to make sure I have that color dispersed the way that I want it to be Good for brows. Okay, mascara. I'm going to fast forward you through mascara uh, because I'm going to put falsies on. So. so really I should probably use a mascara I don't love since I'm covering it up with falsies. But I am using a mascara that I do love, which is the Benefit Bad Gal Bang. It's my current favorite mascara. It's excellent. And when I don't wear falsies, like if I'm just going to wear mascara, it's this one. Um, if I am going to put false lashes over it, it doesn't really matter to me which mascara I use, just as long as I have one. 
down so that all of my lashes blend. Okay. Mascara is on. Gonna let that dry. I'm gonna let my mascara dry. Then put my falsies on. And right now we're gonna do lips. And I put lip balm on when we started. So I'm just gonna wipe off. Or when I started. I'm just gonna wipe off the excess. Alright, when I said monochrome, I meant monochrome. We are doing a lip. A serious lip. And I'm going to use my Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil in Blackmail. And I'm going to line and fill my lips. kind of using my fingers here to blur those edges a little bit because they're not perfect. I never can get them perfect so mostly I've stopped trying and I just kind of blur out any imperfections. Okay so yep that will do now I'm going to take my Anastasia Beverly Hills. I don't know how much you've missed with the lip line finagling. Um, I'm not great at getting a super crisp lip line, but I do what I can. And I don't really have any tips for that. It just, it takes practice and being able to touch up mistakes. Like I've got a little, little redness here and what I'm going to do, a little redness from, you know, leftover lip liner probably so I'm just gonna take a little bit of foundation that was like on the applicator on this and just kind of touch up just a little bit in that area yeah that's better and I'm gonna repowder it some uh, some people do this with a really tiny brush and concealer. That's also an option. Um, that's just not typically how I do it. All right, a little extra powder there. Okay, so I will be back with falsies. And then you can see the whole ass look. So hold tight. I'm super pleased. I feel like the princess of darkness a little bit, which is kind of my jam sometimes. Um, I am not leaving the house today. If I were leaving the house today, I would not wear a lipstick because of the mask. Um, I just, it's, I, I did use a liquid lipstick and they are supposed to be transfer proof, but I know from experience that this ABH side girl is not entirely transfer proof and I don't really want to stain the inside of my mask with, you know, maroon lipstick. So I'm, I'm doing this lip because I know I'm not going anywhere today. If I were going somewhere, I would either not do a lip or wear gloss. This look I've done with this Fenty gloss bomb before, which is like a glossy lip. It's beautiful that way too. Um, so you can kind of go a couple of different directions here in terms of the lip. A nude would be nice. This monochrome thing is kind of my jam today, but then there's also a gloss option and it looks great any way that you cut it. Um, so yeah, I had a really good time doing this look today. So if this sort of content is up your alley and if I seem like your cup of tea, then I hope you will please consider subscribing. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.